Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. When a person has wrong objectives, they will think incorrectly. And that means they will not be able to understand correctly the revelation of God. They will encounter things in the scripture, but they will not be able to perceive them properly. So let me ask you a question, and that is, do you have the right objectives? Do you see things from God's standpoint? Because if you don't, you are going to make poor decisions, and those poor decisions, they will place you in opposition to the living God. And instead of finding blessings in your life, you will find disaster, perhaps eternally. Well, with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew and chapter 12. The book of Matthew and chapter 12. Now, we left off last week with a very famous statement from Yeshua when he speaks about his yoke being light and his burden being easy. And that tells us that he is a blessed Savior, that he wants the very best for his followers. And if we submit to him and follow the guidance of his word, the leadership of his spirit, we are going to find in the end, now that doesn't mean we won't go through some difficult times, but in the end, we are going to find that which is good. And a very important concept in the scripture, something that is good, very good, is the biblical word menucha, which is rest. And when we speak about rest, we're not just speaking about some physical rest, as though taking a nap, sleeping in a chair, relaxing, something along those lines. We're talking about the biblical concept of rest, and that means being in the right location, having the right framework of mindset, having things in a proper way so that you can be a recipient of the blessings of God, the instructions of God, the power of God, so that you can do that which is right. And we see in the scripture that there's a relationship between that word menucha, rest, and the Sabbath day in Hebrew. The Sabbath is called the Shabbat. And we see something that the first thing biblically when we look at the book of Genesis after God created that first man, remember the scripture says, he created them male and female, he created man. The first thing that this couple did was to enjoy the Sabbath. And that tells us something. The Shabbat is not a reward for six days of labor. That's so frequently how we hear of it. But the Sabbath day, the Shabbat, is when we apply it properly to our life, it becomes a source for preparation. See, it's very important that God created humanity on the sixth day. Traditionally, it was, the Bible confirms this, the last part of his creation. And then humanity and God enjoyed the Sabbath day. And that fellowship with God prepared humanity for the future. So we see biblically, according to the book of Genesis, man began with the Sabbath and that prepared him for the rest of the week. In other words, rightly experiencing the Shabbat is preparation, 
necessary preparation in order to see things correctly, be recipients of God's provision so that we can live a fruitful, a pleasing life to him. So that really asks the question, is that what we're interested in? Living a fruitful, a pleasing life to God. Well, in Matthew 12, we're going to encounter much in regard to teaching us a right perspective. So look with me to Matthew 12 and verse 1. We read here, At that time Yeshua went, and what's interesting, and I'm going to deal with this in the exact order of the words. We read that Yeshua went, and then we have, on the Sabbaths, it's in the plural. Now, why is the term Sabbath or Shabbat in the plural? Here's the reason. Because we're seeing something that is not an exception to the rule. We're seeing something that is indeed the norm, the rule. So it's not something for that Shabbat alone, but it's for every Sabbath. He's teaching us a principle a principle that rightly should be understood for understanding the significance, the revelation, the truth concerning that Shabbat, that Sabbath day. Once more, on that time, Yeshua went on the Sabbaths through the grain field and his disciples, they were hungry. So they were hungry but, but it says nothing about him being hungry. And one of the reasons when we understand the rules for rightly teaching and interpreting the word of God, we see that this scripture is showing a dichotomy. It is setting Yeshua apart from his disciples. It is elevating him as he should always be elevated. So his disciples were hungry, keep reading, middle of verse 1, and they began to pluck the stalks, that is, that which contained the grain, these stalks of grain, and they ate. Now, remember, the scripture is very clear. We are told it's the Sabbath day. They are passing with Yeshua through the grain fields, and they are hungry, and they do something. They take the stalk, that is, what contains the grain, and they remove the grain, and they eat. Now, remember something. All of this is happening on the Sabbath day. This is important. Because the question that's going to be asked is this. Are they transgressing the Sabbath? Is this what we should conclude? Now, we have to be careful. Because Messiah, he has a different objective in this passage. You see, Jesus, what he's concerned about is the right understanding of what should Shabbat should produce in our life. Let me say that again. He's concerned with making sure that the Sabbath, what the Sabbath teaches, what it imparts us, we have a right mindset the right framework to discern things properly from a Sabbath point of view. Now, realize something else that may be of new revelation to you, and that is this. Biblically, and I'm speaking about the New Testament, we see a connection between the Sabbath and the kingdom of God. We see many times, for example, in Luke 14, when he teaches about the kingdom of God, he does so in light of Sabbath observance. And this is well known within Judaism because the kingdom of God is called the great Shabbat. So we see traditionally, biblically, and we need to understand there's a connection between the Shabbat and the kingdom. So when we have a right understanding of the Sabbath day, it is going to give us a right perspective, a kingdom understanding. And when we have a kingdom understanding, as we're going to see, 
mercy. Being concerned about the needs of others are going to be at the heart of our mindset. Once more, they began to pluck these stalks of grain and eat. Verse 2. But the disciples, or excuse me, the Pharisees, but the Pharisees, seeing they were witnessing this, and they said to him, that is to Yeshua specifically, and they said to him, Behold, your disciples, they are doing what is not legal to do on Shabbat, on the Sabbath day. So now we have a conflict being set up. And notice the response of our Lord and Savior. How Yeshua, how he responds to this. Verse verse 3. But he said to them, and he didn't say so with, with malice, with anger. He didn't say so flippantly. He didn't scold them. He simply responded. He wanted to give them truth. And what I like about his response is, we are going to see that in order to clarify for them the facts of Shabbat, how properly to apply Sabbath truth to one's life, notice he is going to utilize the word of God. Why do I like that so much? Because the basis for understanding Scripture is Scripture. And we see here, for example, the way to understand New Testament revelation is to properly understand the Old Testament. Did you hear that? What the scripture is imparting to us is a principle. You cannot understand the New Covenant unless first you understand the Old Covenant. So we read in this passage that he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and the ones with him? Verse 4. How he entered into the house of God and the lechem hapanim, that is the showbread. Now, the showbread was, was uniquely placed on a table and this showbread It was in the holy place, not the holy of holies, but the holy place where the priests would enter in, not all of them, but a portion, would enter in on the Sabbath day when they exchanged that showbread that had been there all week on the Sabbath. They would bring in new. And the old that had been there, the priests would eat. And even though they each got only a small amount, they were satisfied. So we see the miraculous aspect of this this showbread. It was only for the priests. But what happens? Yeshua says, have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how they entered into the, the house of God? And the showbread, he ate, which was not lawful. It was not lawful for him to eat, nor those who were with him. So why did they do it? Well, here's the principle. The Sabbath and the law in general was not given to make life uncomfortable, to inflict suffering and pain and hardship. And therefore, we see a principle, pikuach nefesh. Pikuach nefesh is a Hebrew expression, which means basically to to watch over a, a life. And always God is wanting to be a blessing to people. So even though in its original state, the showbread was forbidden for David and his men to eat because of this need, an absolute need, it became permissible to to them to eat. He says it wasn't permissible for David nor his, his men, but only the priests and the priests alone. Verse, verse 5. Or 
Have you not read in the law? Listen to this. Have you not read in the law over and over? Yeshua takes the disciples, the Pharisees, all people, back to the law in order to have a right understanding of his New Testament teachings. Now, it is true that we need to be a believer, endowed with the Holy Spirit to interpret the Scripture properly. But what we see over and over is how New Testament truth is best understood by a right understanding of the Old Testament. And that's why these individuals that, that lessen the significance of the Old Testament and say, well, it's kind of at a lesser level than the new. We ought not study it as much. It's, it's not reliable for matters of faith. We have to always be Christ-centric and allow our faith the Messiah to cause us to see things spiritualized, symbolically different than the literal reading of the text, that is a false teaching. It is incorrect. So once more, verse 5, he says, Have you not read in the Torah that on the Sabbaths, that is once more in the plural, on the Shabbat days, that the priests in the temple would desecrate or profane the Sabbath? Now, what does it mean here? Well, the, the priests would have to do things on Shabbat. For example, the book of Numbers chapter 28 tells us that there were special offerings that were made specifically on the Sabbath day. Others couldn't make an offering on the Sabbath day, only these special ones. And some of the work, the objectives that the priests were required to do daily, including Shabbat in the temple, it was a violation of Sabbath law. But because of the temple's significance, it was allowed to be done. Did you hear that? Because of the temple significance, this is what the, the interpreters of Judaism says concerning this, what we're reading right now about the priest's work. The temple brought a different status. So these things that were forbidden to be done outside the temple, outside the temple prefer, uh, presence, were able to be done at the temple. So Messiah simply asked the question, have you not read what these priests would do? Profaning the Shabbat, but, look at the end of verse 5, but they were innocent. Verse 6, but I say to you that one is here who is greater than the temple. Who's that? Who's the one greater than the temple? Well, it's God. And who is Messiah referring to? The answer is obvious. He is referring to himself. And therefore, here's the revelation. This is an excellent example that, that, that reveals Messiah himself proclaimed, announced, taught, his divinity, that he is God, God with us. So if anyone says Yeshua is not God, they are wrong. Their teaching is incorrect. And we ought not listen to those who deny the divinity of Messiah. So he says, there is one here, meaning among you presently, that is greater than the temple. Verse, verse 7, he says, But do you not know what, what is, is the intent of, of the Shabbat? He says, Do you not know what it is that, that mercy I desire and not sacrifice? So mercy, and here's the key. The more I understand Shabbat truth, the truth of the Sabbath day, the Sabbath teaches us about having a godly perspective for, for mercy. 
The more I understand the relevance and apply that relevance of the Sabbath day to my life, the more I'm going to have the capacity as a believer, a follower of Jesus Christ to be merciful to others, to think of their needs and not to use religious dogma and doctrine to afflict. Remember what we said. Messiah taught my yoke is easy. My burden is light. This is the, the connection between what we have studied last week and this week. Now move on to verse, verse 7, the second half. After he says, do you not know what it is, mercy I desire, and not sacrifice, in order that you should not condemn, judge, those who are innocent. Who's innocent ones? The innocent ones are indeed those, those disciples who have done just that. Taken those, those grain stalks and removed the grain to eat. They're doing it because of hunger, a need. And this also probably speaks of them being rejected. No one invited them on the Sabbath which part of the tradition is to invite people into your homes, bless them with fellowship, with food. But no one did, and therefore they acted in this way. They're not the guilty ones, but those that did not care about their needs. Now, remember that because it's going to become very important. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, For the Son of Man is the Lord also of the Shabbat. The only way that we rightly understand how to apply Sabbath truth to our life is through a personal relationship, a new covenant relationship with Messiah Yeshua. He is a Lord of the Sabbath. It is through Him that truly Sabbath principles can be followed, understood, embraced, and produce that which is pleasing to him. Now, I mentioned that rightly understanding the Sabbath is going to produce mercy. It's going to cause someone to be concerned about someone else. Look at this next passage very quickly. We read, And leaving there, he came to their synagogue. Now, this is a synagogue of the Pharisees. That's why it says their synagogue. And it embraced their dogma. So leaving there, he came to the synagogue that belonged to them. And behold, there was a man having a withered hand. Now think of that. A withered hand, one that, that cannot be used. And being handicapped in this way would certainly be an obstacle, a difficulty. And he was there. And keep reading verse 10. And they asked him, saying, If it is lawful on Sabbaths, remember, in the plural, we're talking about a general principle. Is it lawful on the Sabbaths to heal? And why did they, they ask that question? Because they really wanted truth. They wanted to know his perspective. No, the scripture tells us that they asked him in order to condemn him, to, to say that he is guilty in order to discredit him because they didn't want people following. They weren't concerned with this man whatsoever. Verse 11, and he said to them, what man is there among you that if he has one sheep and this meaning this sheep should fall into a, a pit on the Sabbath day. And here again, it's the Sabbath, plural, meaning a general situation, any Sabbath. He says, does not he seize it, meaning does he grab that, that sheep in that, that, that pit, that hole, and lifts him up, raises him up? Why? Well, a sheep's not going to be comfortable in a hole any day, including Sabbath. So it's, it's forbidden to say, See, remember mercy. It is wrong 
to have that view. Well, it's a Sabbath day. That sheep's just going to stay there. He's going to be uncomfortable. He's not going to be near water. He's not going to be in good pasture to eat. But it's a Sabbath day, and I can't help him. No one would have that view. They understand this concept of pikuach nefesh, helping those in need, saving a life. And therefore, their question, once more, and this is a, a, a Torah principle, they don't get. So he says, look now to, to verse 12. Therefore, how much value, meaning more value, is a man than a sheep? Look at this properly. If one would do it for a sheep, certainly we would do it for a human being. Therefore, he says, therefore it is on the Sabbaths, a general principle, once more in the plural. Therefore, it is lawful on the Sabbath, good, and that's what's emphasized, good to do. That's what a proper Shabbat understanding leads us to do. That which is good, that which fulfills this concept of mercy to others. Now, does that mean that we quickly want to, to do things to, to transgress the Shabbat? No. But in legitimate situations, and that's what he's saying here, we put the individual above Sabbath law because the Sabbath was all long to give rest. That is a positive outcome. Therefore, he says, look at it. Therefore, it is lawful on the Sabbath days good to do. Then he said to the man, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched it forth, and this man's hand was restored, whole or healthy as the other. A great miracle was done. Praise God for it. But notice our last verse. Notice how the Pharisees responded. But, that is in contrast to that, not recognizing the power of God, acknowledging Messiah's identity as the Lord of the Sabbath. But the Pharisees, taking counsel, they took counsel, and here's the key, against him. Then it says, and going out, going out, having taken counsel, departing from that place, they wanted to do something. How? This was what their counsel was in. How? Him they could destroy. The emphasis on him they wanted to destroy. So Sabbath truth gives us a right perspective for understanding the will of God, the mercy of God, and being a blessing to others. Well, I'm out of time. Until next week, may God bless you. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.